Black families dispersed across the Cincinnati area. Some found haven just north of the city limits, the state's first incorporated black city, Lincoln Heights. A historical African-American community that has been truly decimated by social injustice, you know, you know, I tell everybody that if you want to talk about the microcosm of the African-American experience, you just, just walk into exit 13 off of, you know, I-75 and the little Lincoln Heights, you get the whole microcosm from its inception to where we are now. Incorporated in 1947, Lincoln Heights was the first self-governed black community north of the Mason-Dixon line. Residents first began the process of incorporation in 1939, but were immediately met with opposition by neighboring white communities. Incorporation of Lincoln Heights would have created the ability to collect revenue from taxes on property and businesses to support the development of public services, basic services that were available to their neighbors in Woodlawn, Lachlan, and Evendale. But in incorporated Lincoln Heights, meant competition that would draw industry and business from their white neighbors. Nearly 10 years after first petitioning for incorporation, the county finally approved Lincoln Heights application, but not before dividing up nearly 90% of the city's land to its white neighbors. When all was said and done, Lincoln Heights was reduced to less than one square mile. The shape of Lincoln Heights has this scoop out, right? And if you compare that shape to the map, you'll see that, oh, that's the industrial corridor. That's where all the businesses were. That's where a community would have its tax base, right? And so the potential for Lincoln Heights to earn money as a community, to have tax producing, income producing taxable properties was taken away by the surrounding municipalities just chomping up the land that should have been Lincoln Heights. The fact that you have an African-American community, you know, a historical African-American community, and uh, the scars that are left just by the shape of it, it kind of just talks about the disposability of it, you know what I mean? What was left for the residents of Lincoln Heights included no major factories, no industrial tax base. Wright Aeronautical wanted to build B-29 bombers on the land that belonged to Lincoln Heights, but the plant's developers objected to operating on land owned by a black community. So the county gave the land to the new white community, Evendale. Today, that plant continues to operate as part of the sprawling General Electric Aviation Program. B&O Railroad Track and the railroad track behind G over there, I think New York Central. I'm not for sure, but it's a railroad track right behind GE. That was supposed to have been Lincoln High School Yard. Because you had a whole lot of, over there where GE plant is now, you had a whole lot of black people living over there too. From an economic standpoint, the structural violence against Lincoln Heights handed down by county commissioners continues to pay dividends for neighboring Evendale. There, the average household income is nearly $170,000 compared to $34,000 in Lincoln Heights. The system is working just as it was designed for both Evendale and Lincoln Heights, a design built intentionally for differential and disparate outcomes by race, defined by place. For more than 70 years, Cincinnati police have operated a gun range that sits on the northern edge of the city. On the day we visited, gunfire could be heard all over the town, even over the deafening noise of cicadas. The gun range sits adjacent to a public housing complex and a playground. I'm sending kids out to the playground to hear gunshots. And I would love to ask the question, because um, I've never been able to get a straight answer, I would love to ask the question of how do you have Cincinnati Metropolitan Housing Authority houses there, which is Mariana Terrace, we call it the projects. Like, how do you have that next to, you know, something else that's owned by the city of Cincinnati? Pause to consider the reality of the children of Lincoln Heights, who have had to digest a steady diet of images of police murdering unarmed black people across the U.S. while living with the soundtrack of police officers training to use deadly force day in and day out right in their backyard. Just for, I guess, posterity's sake, is Cincinnati Police Department 
the FBI, the DEA, the ATF, U.S. Marshals, Evendale Police, uh, as well as SWAT, sniper training, all is conducted on the site. So there's roughly, I'm gonna say 38,000 gun training hours per year. They shoot 300 days a year, six days a week, seven hours a day. And again, it's been 74 years, but when we were growing up, it was sun up to sun down. Uh, you can hear gunshots at any point. While the sonic toxicity is obvious, the harm to property values is also a toll. After all, who wants to purchase a home with gunfire as a steady feature of the neighborhood soundtrack? With no industrial tax base, Lincoln Heights struggled to support its own school system. Despite the financial struggles, Lincoln Heights High School produced many athletic and scholarly stars, such as world-renowned poet Nikki Giambani and Tony Yates, who went on to play in the NBA and become the University of Cincinnati's first African-American men's basketball coach. But integration of public education and financial woes led to the closing of Lincoln Heights High School when it merged with nearby Princeton City Schools. Growing up in Lincoln Heights, Truthfully, we did not know we were poor because everybody shared about the same thing. It was an all black school. We had black teachers and they stood for no mess, but they were very professional. They came to school teaching in their shirts and ties and, and uh, suits. The ladies were very elegant and they wanted nothing but the best for you. Tell me from an educational standpoint that it got better? I don't know, because we had more folks that went to college when it was Lincoln Heights High School. And an aching sense of otherness became apparent as a sense of community was lost. I can remember in English, uh, the teacher said, I'd like to know what your goals are in, in high school. And one of my goals was to make the A honor roll. And he kind of laughed. And I thought, that was an incentive to prove to him that I could make an, an A in English. In integrated environments, black students oftentimes face scorn and doubt from students and educators. Bob Johnson, who grew up in Lincoln Heights, and Maxine Yates, who grew up in neighboring Glendale, persevered and thrived in Cincinnati despite the odds. Durant Daniels and Carlton Collins are working to rebuild Lincoln Heights on the dreams of their ancestors and the hopes of today's children. At the end of the day, you can still persist. You can still progress. You can still build something. Like, you can build, build a legacy. Now a Lincoln Heights council member, Durant Daniels is taking his grandparents' home here in Lincoln Heights and transforming it into an innovation center, a place where the youth of Lincoln Heights can hone their business skills create and innovate, and foster vitality for the community. Everything from a financial standpoint that you'll be able to learn will take place right in this room. A place to nurture hope.